Alright, let's uh, try this again. Okay, uh, hi, I'm Colin from Trail Trash. I'm excited today to show you the uh, world's old... the world's... Uh, hi, I'm Colin from Trail Trash. Uh, today I'm going to be talking and showing you the World's Edge Shock for the 2017 Suzuki V-Strom, or my 2017 Suzuki V-Strom. Um, you know, f let's just start over. Hi, I'm Colin from Trail Trash. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you the World's Edge shock from Cogent Dynamics for the uh, Suzuki V-Strom 650. I got this a couple days ago. I have already torn it open. The only thing I've really taken out is the bubble wrap. Um, so this is going to be kind of a, a, a first experience for me as well. So this came from the U.S. The only thing I lost during transport uh, was the... Uh, preload adjuster tool. I'm 90% sure that Customs probably threw it out by accident when they uh, when they opened it up. Um, it was wrapped in bubble wrap and it, there was a lot of it. So I suspect they just kind of went boop and it was gone. So this is the magic right here. This comes in a couple different versions. Um, everyone's kind of custom built for your needs based on the questionnaire that you either fill out yourself or you talk with uh, with Todd over the phone. There is a Pro Series version of this. The big difference being that there's a reservoir that attaches to the back here, and that is nitrogen filled, and it comes with a uh, compression adjusting screw on it. This has a uh, damper adjustment, which I've already marked um, what the stock settings were, what it came on, uh, with a little bit of metal paint. Um, all the way to the right is closed, and you can just hear it's a little click. Hear that? Bam. Definitely worth making note of your, your, your stock settings as soon as you get this thing, because it is set up to be the perfect middle ground in terms of what you can use it for um, when you get it. The other thing you'll notice is there is a little waiver disclaimer FYI. Um, essentially, each individual spring is going to have its own free length. So my spring, totally unsprung, no weight on it, is 178 millimeters long. But if you measure it right now, I measure at about 170. So there's 8 mils of, wait, 880. Yeah, there's, so there's eight millimeters of preload on it. Um, so definitely worth making a note of that. 170 millimeters, stock. Yeah. Now I know if I ever want to put it right back to the factory setting, I just have to make sure that that free length is 170 millimeters. The other thing I sprung for on this shock was... I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called a needle thrust bearing. Yeah, needle thrust bearing. So this is something that makes it easier to adjust the preload. Ideally, I would have gone for the remote adjustable preload assembly, uh, like the stock uh, V-Strom has. Um, but it was an extra 300 ish dollars, and I just didn't have the money for it. So I went with the manual one. However, if you're constantly switching between one upriding and two upriding, it might be something that's worth your while getting. Um, or if you're constantly taking uh, 20, 30, 40 pounds of luggage off and on your bike all the time, it's uh, it's definitely worth worth uh, worth investing in for you. Talking to Todd about that, about adjusting your uh, your preload. Now. With the stock shocks you get on most bikes, they're relatively undersprung from factory. And the reason for that is, 
if you look at this shock, there's that bottoming bushing there, or that bottoming cork, we'll call it, because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what it's actually called. So there's another one inside of this at the very top. So what happens if you jump your bike and you bottom out? You go all the way through the suspension trap. You're technically undersprung, right? Sure, we'll say. Now, if you leave the preload on this too high, that other uh, bushing in the very top, or that other uh, cork, we'll call it, um, you'll end up topping out, and you'll actually destroy the internals in your shock. So, like Todd said to me, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. If you're upgrading to one of these shocks and you're spending the money, make sure that you're taking the time and getting your preloads correct. You want it. You want your suspension sag about one third of your total. Uh, your total travel there. I'm terrified this thing's going to roll off the table, but based on what I do, I just really shouldn't be worried. Um, <laughs> so we've got the uh, the rebound damping here. We've got uh, adjustable preload collar here. This is where the nitrogen reservoir would be on the Pro Shock. Um, I did have some questions for Todd initially because I didn't see any instructions that came with it. But what it did come with, and in all my geniusness, I, geniusness, I don't think it's a real word, is it? I overlooked this little QR code on the back. So if you take a photo of that with your smartphone, it'll open up motocd.com, and it'll take you right to the resources section, and there you'll have all the stuff you need for installation. Even with that, I still had a question. The only other question I had was, which, which, which way am I putting this? And Todd kind of said as a general rule, I think he said it goes forward, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. I'd say whatever way your um, little knob, like on the stock shock, there's the little bit that comes off for the remote adjustable preload. If that's going out towards the front, then put this towards the front. If this is going, if it's going towards the back, put this towards the back. Right? Makes sense? Um, the other thing that uh, it came with was lifesavers, which is great because I just recovered from food poisoning and haven't really been able to eat anything, so I'm looking forward to getting into these. Um, and then lots of stickers, which is great. We'll just throw one of these on right now, just because I can. There. Now I look like one of those sponsored assholes. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about ordering this thing. It's 670 US dollars, so about a thousand bucks Canadian. It was another hundred for, yeah, it was about a hundred Canadian for shipping. Um, maybe it was a hundred, anyways. A thousand dollars for the shock, add another 300 for shipping and import fees. So it's, it's, it's not cheap. And I, I, I really am curious to see how this performs on the V-Strom for what I do. Now, depending on what you do, your shock's going to be built differently. Um, like, for example, I'm 220 pounds without my gear, probably a little less after the whole food poisoning incident. Um, I have a medium riding style, and they kind of break down what each of those means when they ask you about it. I have my bike at a standard height. If you were lowered or you had raised it, it would be built differently again. Um, and then we start talking about luggage. So for me, I have soft saddle bags with actual luggage in them, uh, which will say 20 pounds. And I have that on about like 10% of the time. Like when I go big, do a big trip. For the most part, I'm just riding without the bags. I'm riding on the trails, just going out for the day. I almost always have a tank bag and that weighs about five pounds. So that's five pound tank bag, 100% of the time. Um, tail pack, we'll say that's where I put most of my weight. The maximum that ever gets up to is about 35 pounds. We'll say, and that's 5% of the time. So when I go on that really long overlanding journal journey, like the uh, True Northeast trip I took last summer, um, where I had, you know, uh, seven and a half liters of fuel and enough stuff for 10 days of being out in the wilderness. I hardly ever take a passenger, so they just put no passenger. Um, I do 40% street, 40% Jeep or single, single track, and about 20% gravel. And then at the end, it's 
what do you prefer? Do you prefer a soft shock? Do you prefer a standard shock? Or do you prefer prefer a, a, a firm ride? So for me, it's standard. Um, I, I prefer it to be just right in the middle. So the needle thrust bearing assembly, yeah. So this extra thing, just it, 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 it makes it easier to adjust it. Um, I think it was an extra 20 bucks. It's just just save yourself the hassle, just, just get it. Yeah, so I'm really excited to test this out. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, drop me a comment. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, drop me a line in the comments, I'd be happy to answer them, or uh, direct message us on Instagram or uh, Facebook. Um, if you don't follow us already, please like and subscribe. Um, really, subscribers are what allows us, or what will allow us to make more videos in the future, and hopefully we get to the point where we can actually start to uh, bring in a little, a little bit of ad revenue to help pay for cameras and RAM and video edit, like all this kind of, these little things that add up. Um, don't get me wrong, I love doing this, this is my hobby, um, but it would be nice to have a way to fund the hobby. Um, so yes, if you could like and subscribe, that would be absolutely fabulous. That was terrifying. <laughs> Did you see me dump it? No, I missed it.